Senator from Montana. Mr. President, the Republic leader just a few moments ago says that this bill raises costs. With all due respect to my good friend from Kentucky, that statement is false. Just this week, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, the organization that analyzes legislation, both sides, both bodies depend on it, a very professional outfit, I might add, said that our bill would reduce premiums, not increase, but reduce premiums for 93% of Americans. And for all Americans, it would make sure that better quality insurance is available. Let me state that a little bit differently. The Congressional Budget Office said that for 93% of Americans, premiums would be reduced. It is true that for 7%, that's not the case. Those are Americans whose um, incomes are too high to qualify for the subsidies, that is, the tax credits, buying insurance in the exchange. But those 7% would get a lot better insurance, a lot higher quality insurance than they get today because of the insurance market reforms that are in this legislation. The provisions which deny pre-existing insurance companies from denying coverage based on pre-existing condition, health status, uh, the community rating, the uh, market rating provisions, and, and no rescissions, and etc. So, for all Americans, it is true that this legislation will provide better quality insurance, uh, comparing apples with apples. 93 percent reduction for all Americans. For an introduction for 93 percent of Americans, for the other 7 percent for whom there's not a reduction, those people would be in the individual market. They'd have a lot higher quality insurance. So if they're, and in fact, the quality would be much higher. It would, be, it would exceed the, the increase in premiums. So they'd be getting a better deal than they'd otherwise be getting. This is, CBO just looked at this for the year 2016. They didn't look at it for other years, but at least that is the case with 2016. Reduction, not an increase, but a reduction. In fact, for many in the non-group market, those who individually buy insurance, they'd find that their premiums would be reduced about 40 or 50 percent. Uh, uh, about 60 percent of those in the non-group market would find that their insurance premiums would be reduced. Uh, I, guess, I don't have the exact figure in front of me, but it's in the neighborhood of 40 or 50 percent reduction premiums. That's due uh, to the uh, to tax credits. And, um, Again, CBO says that those tax credits would cover nearly uh, two-thirds of a premium. So I guess uh, I was a little conservative, a little more than 40 or 50 percent. It covered two-thirds of, of premiums. Um, so CBO says that those getting these tax credits would pay roughly 56 percent to 59 percent lower premiums than they would without our bill. And those are real savings, Mr. President. Not re that's respect to premiums. What about out-of-pocket costs? This legislation has absolute limits on out-of-pocket costs. Today, insurance companies can, can give you, sell you a policy, you pay certain premiums, but there's no limit on the out-of-pocket costs that you might have to pay. Your deductible is so high, for example. This legislation puts an absolute limit that to no policy can be sold that um, allows you to have out-of-pocket costs above a certain amount. And I think it's um, $6,000 for an individual. It might be double that for a family. But there's a limit. So this bill does not, as stated by the, majority, by the minority leader, uh, raise costs. In fact, in fact is it reduces costs. In addition, there are many p people who say, oh, gosh, this is a trillion dollar bill. Some even say it's a two and a half trillion, two, two and a half trillion dollar bill. Um, senators on the other side of the aisle make this statement. And they say this to try to scare us. Um, I think they kind of, they, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if they really believe it. But they like saying it because it's a nice, good scare tactic. Um, and uh, I, I, I say I'm not sure they really believe it. I wonder if they believe it because when you read the legislation, it's deficit neutral. It does not add to the deficit. Um, we have a budget resolution, Mr. President. And under that budget resolution, health care legislation, for the next 10 years has to be deficit neutral. I cannot add one thin dime to the deficit. So I'm a little curious when people on the side talk about a trillion dollar bill. It's not, it doesn't cost anything. 
Um, in fact, it reduces the deficit by $130 billion um, in a 10-year period. That's what the Congressional Budget Office says, the professional, nonpartisan budget office. And in the second 10 years, um, it, CBO says our bill will reduce the deficit by a quarter of a percent of gross domestic product. Well, that's roughly half a trillion dollars. So in the second 10 years, this legislation reduces the deficit by half a trillion dollars. That's a reduction in deficit. So I don't know why, where, you know, these people say on the other side that this is a trillion dollar bill. I've heard one senator, I'm not going to mention his name, I have, he's at, actually I heard him say another day, he's on the floor right now, this is a two and a half trillion dollar bill. I mean, it's not true. Just not true. It's not true because it's paid for. Now, I can say that something costs something, but it would be only fair if I also say that it's paid for. I, don't know if, I, don't, I think it's fair to give both sides of the story, not just one side of the story. And I'm giving both sides of the story. It does cost a trillion over 10 years, but it's paid for. In fact, it's more than paid for the $230 billion over 10 years. And um, so those that say two and a half trillion, they start at a different date. They start at a date like a 214, I think, up through the year 2020 and say that's why it costs so much. Well, it's paid for during those years, too. Um, so this bill, uh, just to make it very clear here, this bill um, does not raise costs. It, um, in fact, lowers costs. The Congressional Budget Office says so. This bill does not add to our federal deficits. Um, in fact, it reduces our federal deficits. And I, I would just urge us to, to look at the facts. So, when we closely, whenever we hear statements being made by anybody, including myself, I see you know, I just urge people to kind of listen to the music as well as the words, read between the lines, see what's really going on here. And it's the whole thing that my father used to say um, a long time ago, it's very wise, basically he said, don't believe everything you read, only half of what you hear, which is to take everything a few grains of salt. But when you take things a few grains of salt, I think the truth starts to emerge. Mr. President. I agree with the senator from Montana, and that's why it's fortunate we have 22 minutes on the Republican side to, to, to clear up some misconceptions. The Democratic health care bill does cost $2.5 trillion over 10 years when it's fully implemented. Uh, it's, uh, if I may say so, arrogant to think that the American people couldn't figure out the difference between the first 10 years when the bill wasn't implemented in four of those years and they'd like to know that it costs two and a half trillion dollars. Might Senator just yield for a question? I'd just one question. To, if it's on your time, I'll be happy to. Oh, fine. I mean, is it paid for? The senator is right, and that's the subject that I would like to talk about. But it's paid for by cutting grandma's so on a Medicare. Basis, there's no. It's paid case. for by. It's paid for by cutting grandma's Medicare by four hundred and sixty-five million dollars over a ten-year period of I'll, time by five hundred billion dollars. I might have one more question. That's a debate. That's a second question. I'd love to debate with you, but on the first question only, you, you, you do admit that it is paid for. I no, I admit that it costs two point five trillion dollars, and the attempt to pay for it is Medicare cuts and tax increases and increases to the deficit by not including the physician's reimbursement in the health care bill. Okay, but if I might ask one more question. I think we all know that, that the House has taken action on the physician's reimbursement. The Senate will also take action on it before we adjourn. And that is the so-called doc fix will be fixed, which is really a separate issue. That's, that's, that will be paid for. But putting that aside, the doctor's issues aside, just health care reform, we always, I say that because we take up the doc fix virtually every year. We don't take up health care reform every year. Health care reform is an entirely separate um, a proposition, a separate legislative endeavor here. But if, if, if the Senate will just you know, bear with me and take the doc fix, put that off the table just for a second, we can address that later. But just for a second, health care reform, whether it's a, you use a 10 year number or, a, or, or when you start in 2010 or start in 2014.